So we're standing here today by the trusty play seat challenge, uh, loved by many, hated by a few. Um, and I thought it would be funny and, and kind of interesting to see what sort of an experience we can get in terms of accessories, bolt on accessories, um, with, with, with a fold away seat. And in this case, you know, the play seat challenge as it is super popular. I wanted to sort of see what we can get on there and still be able to hopefully fold it away at the end. So we're talking, you know, shift amount, handbrake, tactile transducers, wind simulation, digital dashboard, you know, pretty much everything I have, I think it is everything I have, oh, bar, bar a motion platform on my main rig, but in this sort of foldable format, you know, I thought it'd be quite fun to do. So I've got a few bits and bobs here and I thought it's about time I threw it all together and had a little play. So what I'll do now is come and get that camera and take you on a little walk around of what we've actually got fitted to the play seat. And then after that, I'll hop in and just do a quick 30 second blast in dirt rally to show it all working. And hopefully some of you will find it interesting. So let's just grab that camera. Let's start from the top down. I mean, obviously we've got a Logitech uh, G920 heel shifter and pedals on the floor there. But aside from that, which is kind of obvious, everyone knows what that is, we'll look at the very top here. What we've got is an old Android phone, probably six or seven years old now, in a cheap eBay phone holder, which I don't recommend because technically it holds on with a suction cup. Well, the suction cup never worked, not even once, not even when I tried it on my window. So it's actually held down by some double-sided tape for this experiment and this video. So I won't be linking to one of those in the description because it's shit. Um, but the phone itself works just fine with some software called Sim Dashboard and works as a little digital dashboard. Again, I do a similar thing over there on my main rig, but with a 10 inch tablet. So this is just a scaled down version of what I have over there. And then as you'll see either side, We've got two big fans, and these are from Sim Racing Studio. This is their double the fan sort of wind simulation package. And one of the things I particularly like about this fan package, as opposed to the one I have over there, which is the DIY one, is that this does something called wind curving. So as you corner, the harder you corner, the inside and faster the inside fan. So if you're cornering left, for example, that fan over there that's on the inside will decrease its output almost almost like you're being sucked around the corner, if you know what I mean. It doesn't quite make sense in, when I say it out loud, but, but you know what I mean? And if you were to go around the right-hand corner, the right-hand fan would decrease its speed. So it's just another form of physical feedback about what your car is doing in the simulation, whether it's dirt rally, whether it's eye racing, whatever it is. And that's a feature that I really quite like with these particular Sim Racing Studio um, setup fans here. So we've got the, the dashboard, we've got the, we've got the fans, we've got the shifter on the left. And then what you see on the seat here is another Sim Racing Studio product. This is their four transducer shape kit. So they're very basic model. They do another one which attaches to the back and an additional one that will go under your pedals as well, or on your pedals. So you could have a total of eight transducers, that would be. This basic shake kit works really well just on its own. Again, this is if you don't want to go a DIY option. Um, I've got some big transducers bolted to my rig over there that I'm working on at the minute, but this is for the non-DIYers. This is for the people that just want plug and play, work straight out the box. Oh, and also the Sim Racing Studio software is by far over and above the easiest to use of all the transducer tuning software I've had the pleasure of using and the same for the wind simulation. That is a big, big plus. It's super easy to get your head around. Um, the one I use again over there, uh, which is Sim Commander, is, I don't, know who, <laughs> I don't know who designed the UI on that, but it's terrible and it's not intuitive at all. So with this little kit here, this little four transducer, cushion, you might say. You just throw it in your seat, as you see there, and you plug it in, which I've not yet done. You can see the cable's still there. And you've got four transducers, uh, two at the front, two at the back. And one of my favorite features about this is probably, it's actually a similar type of um, feature to the, to the wind curving. But the harder you corner, basically the, the left and right and transducers in pairs 
will vary their intensity based on the level of grip and how hard are your corner your cornering within the game. And so if you're going around a corner really fast, really sharp, let's say it's a left-hand corner, your right-hand transducers will vibrate, you know, a varying intensity based on speed and how acute the corner is. And when you after you've used these enough, you start to sort of make this mind muscle connection kind of my mind butt cheek connection where you can tell sort of almost that you're on the level of grip by the feedback you're getting from the, the tactile transducers. So that's probably my favorite feature with this little shake kit. Obviously it does, you know, all road lumps and bumps and road textures. It can do engine vibrations. You can have a thud for gear change and all the usual things. But for me, I think that that sort of simulate, I think it's called simulated G-force. Obviously it doesn't throw you around or anything, but it's to simulate, yeah, that's in fact, yes, that's the telemetry it uses. It uses the G-force telemetry. So again, the harder and faster you corner, the greater G-force would be created and the more you feel it through your butt and your, and your upper thighs there. And you know, if you, if you sort of did a sharp left, right, you feel it sway from left to right, you know, as you corner. And it works really quite well. It's a nice little feature. Um, Again, that's all from Sim Racing Studio. Uh, and then we just got a, a shift amount here, which is a DIY job um, that I've made out of a, a VESA pole mount. And then last but not least, that eBay Amazon handbrake that I reviewed only a couple of weeks ago uh, clamped on there. So for a foldable setup, we've got quite a lot going on. Like I say, almost as much as what I have on here aside from the motion platform itself. And obviously that's gonna be impossible. You can't have motion platform with a foldable seat. It just wouldn't work. But that's everything we have here. There will be, so, so basically I've, I've got a, a discounted link for Sim Racing Studio and I've, I've had that for over a year in the description of, of my vid. So feel free if you do want any of these products to, to whiz through and you'll get a little bit of money off. I think it's only 5%, but it all adds up, doesn't it? Um, I'll also have a link to the handbrake, just like I did in my review video, because I think for the money, it's pretty decent. Um, add a little bit of grease if yours doesn't come greased and you're good to go. And then the, I, uh, I, can, I can link to the website for Sim Dashboard. Oh, I don't have a discounted link for those, uh, for that, but I'll, I'll put a link there should you want it, because that works really well. Again, I use it over there and I have done for the last few years, so it's a good little product. I won't link to the cheapy eBay phone holder, but I will zoom in here so you can see what it looks like should you choose to get something similar yourself. Just buy a good one, don't buy a crap one, because it will just break. I literally didn't even get to use it and it, it fell apart after me attempting to suction cup it to the window. So that was that. So that's everything we got on there. Digital dashboard, wind simulation, handbrake, shift amount, and four tactile transducers. A pretty comparable package, I think, for a fold away setup. So let's have a little hop in it, and, um, and I'll do a demo as best as I can. Obviously, you won't feel what I feel, but you'll see me using everything. You'll hear the fans, and you'll see the digital dashboard and what have you. So um, yeah, let's hop, hop into that. <coughs> so you see me get in it, in fact, I hadn't even thought of this, but as you can see, with everything still attached, you can definitely get in and out. So I've got my little digital dash in front of me there. What I like to see in dirt rally is usually my revs more than anything. And sometimes, and perhaps the, the time as well, but ultimately when you're rallying, you ain't got a lot of time to glance away from where you're headed. But the revs are the, the most useful thing for me in this particular sim. Obviously in other sims, you might want to see, you know, position, lap times, things like that, split times. And it's all, it's all configurable, you can all put it on there. So, as always, let's pull the handbrake to get things started. And away we go. Now, straight away on the handbrake there to get around that corner. See my digital dash showing me what gear I'm in. The wind's just starting to pick up now as we're going a little bit quicker. So that's the thing, the wind is, is speed based. And also, as I say, when you corner, the um, whatever direction you're cornering, that inner fan will slow down as well. Ooh. Pay attention, Carl. Underneath me, I can feel the lumps and bumps and undulations in the road. 
And again, as I'm cornering and sliding around, as that G-force increases from one side to the other, I can feel it shifting. So way from left to right, as I go, you know, from one way to the other, I think it's such a lovely little, a lovely little addition. And to be honest, this whole experience in a little fold away seat, you really can't complain. You really can't. Because all these things sort of really add to the overall experience, even though things like the wind is obviously not, um, it's not one-to-one -one realistic with the wind speed in real life, obviously. Um, but it's still that additional type of physical feedback to give you a feeling of motion that you're, you're actually moving forward, you know? Faster you go, stronger it gets. I'm not listening to my co-driver, I have no idea where I'm going. And again, this little handbrake look just works lovely for 50 or 60 notes. And of course it is, um, it is an analog handbrake, so the further you pull it, the harder the, the handbrake applies. So you can vary the amount of braking force at the rear wheels based on the surface you're on. Something people often wonder why do you need a variable handbrake hull? The answer is because you need less braking force to initiate a drift on ice than you do on hot sticky tarmac. You don't want to over rotate the car. I did a video about this a while back as well. But yeah, you can see everything work. I mean, you can't see the vibrations, but I can tell you they're working lovely. Um, all the little lumps and bumps are there. As I'm changing direction, swaying from left to right to give me that feeling of sort of almost like I'm moving as best as you can with, you know, this sort of vibration based setup. The fans are keeping me cool. And if we, if we get out onto a bit that lets me really get up some speed, which I don't think we're gonna, um, we're, then a combination of the wind really picking up and the frequency of the vibrations, not as in their audible frequency, but how often you feel them, it all starts to speed up faster and faster and faster, the faster you're going. As you're going over more bumps, it gets more hectic and you really get this feeling, almost, almost of speed, you know, which is really what it's, this little setup's all about. <laughs> My, Let's just, we'll pause there for now. My, um, my eBay phone holder <laughs> has flopped forward. So again, don't buy a cheap eBay phone holder. <laughs> buy one from somewhere else, but you get the idea of how it works. Um, so that's, you know, that's everything we've got strapped on. I'm a big fan of wind. I'm a big, big fan of tactile. That's one of my favorite add-ons to any sim rig. I'm a big fan of handbrakes. Obviously you probably can't see it, but it is there, I still haven't greased it, so you can, you can hear that. Um, you know, when, it, when you're a rally driver, you've got to have a handbrake, there's no two ways about it. Um, everything just works really well. So I think if this was all I had in my life for sim racing, you know, it's all I could afford, it's, I don't need to fold it away, I'd be more than happy with everything I have here. These from Sim Racing Studio are great. The cushion that I'm sitting on with the four different transducers in, again, are great. And, like I said in the beginning, these are for the non-DIYers among us. These are for the people that just want to buy something, plug it in and know it works and have super easy software to set it up with. That is one of the ball lakes with the DIY options. The software that you end up using, like Sim Commander, it's just not user friendly. It takes a while to get your head around it. It's a pain in the ass. This is all plug and play, it's all easy, which I think what Sim Racing Studio really does well is the ease of the software and the plug and play nature of it all. So that's good stuff. Sim Dashboard is such a pucker little app. And if you haven't got one, you know, because then it allows you to then use your screen as like a windscreen out into the world. You don't have to have dials or, or dashboard elements on there. You can remove all that and just use that as your window out into the world, into the, to the rally stage or the racetrack that you're on. So they're, they're pucker and they're well worth getting. Um, obviously handbrakes, handbrake, you need it for rally games. And I like an H pattern shifter, but that's just me. So let's get out of this and then let's see if it all still folds away because that 
is also kind of important because this is a fold away cockpit. And if it doesn't fold away, what was the point in making the video, Carl? Um, and I genuinely haven't tried yet, so we're gonna find out together. So as you can tell, I've repositioned the camera. Um, I've also unplugged the, the USB cable, so we should be able to hopefully just fold this away. Now this little phone holder here, albeit utter shite, um, it's gonna allow us to fold the phone back flat like that, although it looks like it's about to pop out of the holder. Again, buy a good phone holder. Do not buy a cheap eBay one like I did there, because it's crap. Um, but yeah, it allows me to fold the phone flat like that, which I think may come in handy as we fold this up now, because the, um, if you saw my other video about the handbrake, you know that stays on without any issues. And yeah, I think we're gonna be good. So I know people always like to point out to me that if I loosen the wheel deck and fold that further back, it will go narrower. For me, it doesn't matter. I like it this way. I don't need it to be any thinner. And it actually means it stays upright without having to lean on anything. So that's that folded away so far. Um, and it's basically, we just got our pedals left. Oh, I haven't undone that. Let's just undo that. Put that there, throw our cables in, and a bit of leftover strap, and do the Velcro up. And this is gonna be the entire, you know, the whole thing folded away with four tactile transducers. The cushion still just sat there in, um, in the seat. The handbrake is still attached. I'll spin it round so you can see it in a second. Put that little, that little leg in as well. So that's everything, hopefully you can see it. So we've still got the two fans attached, the digital dashboard is there, just clears under the strap, perfect. Um, cushion sat in the seat, obviously the shifter is still there on the shifter mount, and the handbrake is there as well. So if that isn't a pucker little sim racing setup for those of us that can't have a full rig and need something that folds away i mean i don't know what is i think that's a bit of a win anyway thank you very much for watching as i say they'll be linked in the description for the bits and bobs like the handbrake i'll link you to the website for the sim dash software there's a sim racing studio link and a discount code for them as well and i'll probably throw some amazon and ebay links for things like the play seat and the logitech stuff as well should you be should you have nothing and you decide carl i want everything in that video because it looks the tits then i'll link it all for you um and you can click through and obviously i'll get a small amount of commission from the ebay and, and amazon sales all helps towards the channel and um, maybe next time I'll be able to afford to buy a good phone holder instead of a crap one. So yeah, cheers for watching. As always, take it easy.